Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Charmaine Cruz, and I'm currently a PhD student at Trinity College Dublin here in Ireland. And my presentation this morning will focus on the preliminary results of the June habitat classification using UAV images. So this topic is a part of the first objective of my research. And just to give you a brief background about my overall research, so my PhD topic is a part of the ongoing research project called IHABIMAP or Habitat Mapping Assessment and Monitoring Using High Resolution Imagery. And it is a four-year research project funded by the EPA or Environmental Protection Agency. And it is a multidisciplinary project from the fields of remote sensing, ecology, machine learning, and geography. So the overall aim of my research is to develop analytical approaches to determine if and how UAV remote sensing and machine learning techniques can effectively map, monitor, and assess Annex 1 habitats here in Ireland. So my research focuses on three habitat types. So I have um, the grassland, coastal, and upland habitats. So what I will be presenting to you this morning is a part of my first objective, which is to evaluate the use of multi-temporal UAV imagery in characterizing June habitats or Annex 1 June habitats. And in this slide, you can see a map showing the locations of my study sites. So those Annex 1 habitats that I mentioned earlier are based on the Habitats Directive. And Habitats Directive is a part of the main legal framework for nature conservation in the EU. And its aim, it, its aim is to ensure the conservation of the natural habitats across the EU. And under Article 17 of this directive, it states there that each EU member state must submit a conservation or a habitat conservation status report to the European Commission every six years. And this report is based on the um, available data. And so those authorities which are responsible for the compliance of that requirement are now facing with the need for acquiring information about the habitats and the ways to acquire it. So basically the question is how this um, advancement on UAV or drones and machine learning techniques can be used to support um, Ireland's reporting obligation under the Article 17 of this directive. So in Ireland, much of the work conducted for habitat mapping and monitoring is through field surveys. And we know that there are limitations on this technique when it comes to a periodic assessment of habitats over larger areas. And thus, there is a need for an approach that would effectively complement with these field-based methods. And one way to do that is the use of drones as a way to acquire data and advanced mapping methods as a way to extract information. So again, I will be talking about the results that I have so far. Okay, so here you can see the general um, workflow that I followed. So it is divided into four steps. So the data collection, data preparation, the model development and validation and classification using the final model and accuracy assessment. So this core methodology will be almost similar for all the habitat types that we are considering in this um, research. So for data collection, we have the drone image acquisition for each site. And the number of acquisitions here depends on the ecosystem that is being studied. So for example, for those sites with um, plant communities that change more during the growing season, like grasslands, uh, we'll have three or four image acquisitions to capture the interannual variability in the habitats. And then 
the vegetation data here from um, the field, which were collected immediately after the UAB survey, to obtain the actual state of the vegetation that was recorded by the UAV sensor. Okay, and then next for the image preparation. So we use the technique called structure from motion method to process the acquired UAV imagery and generate an orthomosaic and um, a digital surface model or an elevation layer. And then from these data sets, um, we derived um, other variables like vegetation indices to highlight the spectral characteristics of the habitats. And then we trained a model using the pixel-based random forest technique, and we use k-fold cross-validation to estimate the model accuracy. And then this model from here was applied to classify the habitats within the entire study site. So the methodology was initially implemented to, to classify okay. so the methodology was initially implemented to classify dune habitats in a, one of our sites in the Maharis, which is located in the um, southwest of Ireland. So we have two sites here, but um, I only up, um, developed a model first in the southern site, which is um, letter B in this case, which was flown using a multi-spectral camera. So last year in, um, in 2020, we had three image acquisitions for these sites. The first one was in May and then in July and then in October. So here are just some pictures during the survey. So our goal is to collect comparable images three to four times this year per site. And with this goal, we reviewed best practices for data collection and we prepared um, field protocols that we have to follow in the field at each visit. So in this in that site, there are six recorded Annex 1 habitats in the area. So you can see the um, Annex 1 code here, like the four-digit number. Uh, but in this processing, we are only considering four of them, which are 2120, 2130, 2170, and 2190. The other two recorded Annex 1 habitats, which are 1210 and 1220, are rare habitats in this particular site. We also included in the classification those other um, common habitats which are present on the image. And these habitats were labeled according to their um, faucet categories. So faucet is um, it's an Irish um, classification scheme of habitats. So we have here LS1, LS2, ED1, and ED3. Although some of these habitats, although they were marked as non-annex, but they represent areas of disturbed Annex 1 habitats like ED1 and ED3. And this is important as this will allow the ecologists to have an assessment of the level of disturbance within the Annex 1 habitats. So, um, so in this picture, you can see um, one of the project members collecting training samples in the site. So the aim here is to mark the center and indicate the radius of a homogeneous vegetation cover. Then after that, um, the ecologist and myself will review the collected training samples on the screen to ensure that there are no overlaps and to determine if they are really aligned with the correct habitats as seen on the image. And if needed, we will add more training samples on screen to supplement those classes with insufficient samples or those which are not represented in the field data like roads or buildings. So here I trained um, 14 models depending on the number of acquisitions. So if one acquisition, two or three, and depending on the number of variables. 
sa variables, meaning if spectral or topographic variables. And for model, model evaluation, I use the K-fold cross-validation technique. So the idea of the K-fold cross-validation method is that we split the data set into K number of folds, let's say five folds. And each fold will be used as the test data set. And the remaining K minus one fold, which is in my example earlier, which is four, are used in training in the training data. And then using that, we train a model and evaluate it. And the process of training and evaluation is repeated until all folds are used as a test set. Hence, this will give us K number of accuracies. That's why I have here um, the computed mean and the standard deviation values. So this table here shows the calculated accuracies based on five folds. And as we can see, all models here received high accuracy values ranging from 81 to 93%. And the standard deviation values showed that the computed accuracies have low variability across the data. So you can see from the graph here that the accuracies obtained for um, multiple field campaigns were higher than the accuracies for single field campaigns which is particularly evident uh, for, uh, for models based on spectral data only, which is this one. These results might, might suggest that using multi-temporal UAV data can um, improve the model performance. We can also see here that all models using both spectral and topographic variables have more than 90% accuracy. And comparing this with the models using spectral data only, the differences range from 2% to 10%, depending on the number of acquisitions. We can see that the differences, um, the differences for single periods were higher than, the, than, those, multi, than those from multi-temporal models. These observations can suggest that by adding topographic variables or features like elevation and slope can significantly or can increase the accuracy of the models derived from single acquisition period. Here you can see the feature importance um, scores as computed by random forest for each single field campaign. So these values here can provide insight into the data set, like the um, relative importance of each feature when making a prediction. So basically, we'll have an idea on which features may be the most relevant or least relevant. Again, as from the previous slide, the ranking here shows the importance of the elevation, which is a topographic variable. Then I generated confusion matrices for four models using both spectral and topographic variables. So one um, for May, July, October, and one which is a multi-temporal model using images from the three periods. So the number along the major diagonal um, of the matrix here are the correctly classified samples. While the color here represents the ratio of the correctly classified and the total number of samples. So for instance here, dark blue represents a ratio of one wherein all samples are, corrected, are correctly classified and white represents a ratio of zero indicating that no samples are classified correctly. And from this confusion matrices, it can be observed that these four models were able to identify most of the Annex 1 habitats, most of the Annex 1 dune habitats in the test set with an accuracy of 90% and above. Only one class, which is um, 2170, was identified less than 1%. And the classes ED1 and ED3 have accuracies within the range of um, 
73 to 87 percent, which are lower than the other classes. And according to the Confucian matrices, both ED1 and ED3 are mostly misclassified with um, 2120, 2120. And similarly, habitat type 2170 and 2190 are sometimes confused with one another. So here, um, even with multi-temporal data and topographic variables included, there are obvious uh, misclassifications between habitat types. And this confusion is most likely to be related to the um, similarities in their spectral characteristics. And this slide shows the spatial distribution and extent of different habitat types as predicted by random forest based on um, different image acquisition periods. So again, we have for May, July, October, and then when the three periods were combined and fixed June habitats or 2130 is the most dominant class in this particular study site, particular um, yeah, study site. And then 2120 was generally, or the mobile dunes was generally located parallel to the shore and in the northwest of the largest classified dune plaque within the study site. And also from the classified images, we can also see the presence of tracks or maybe human tracks as classified as AD1 or AD3. And this slide shows the area in hectares and the comparison of percent cover of habitats within the study sites as predicted by random forest. So yeah, 2130 is the dominant cover, which covers approximately 60% uh, or more than 60% of the area, that my study area. And then both ED1 and ED3 have the lowest proportions within the study site. And so the differences here in the computed area for each class are resulted from misclassifications, which may have been caused by the vegetation color changes across image acquisition. And I think that will be one of the next steps that I need to do is to identify the best time window for image acquisition for the June habitats. And if one period is significantly better than another period. So I will be doing some statistical tests to really say, to determine if um, a certain period is significantly better than the other one as well as the transferability of the model. So how the model can be transferred to another site or to another period. Then here's just a map showing the classified image and a reference data from the San Junes monitoring project that they um, conducted before in 2013. So San Junes monitoring project as far as I know, is um, it's a program, it's a project that is also for the habitat directive. Okay, so in summary, um, the multi-temporal classification, so the use of multi-temporal UAV images can improve the model accuracy for mapping Annex 1 habitats. So again, I will be um, doing more tests to really evaluate this um, statement. And important variable, so the added value of topographic variables, elevation and slope in increasing the model performance for classifying dune habitats. And the per class accuracies, so this confusion is most likely to be related to the similarities in their spectral characteristics and the dune classified habitat map. So the differences in the computed area for each site resulted from misclassifications. So acknowledgement for the um, for the EPA and thank you for listening.